सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स एंटाइटल्ड आर पास वन पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड थ्री चैप्टर नंबर टेन टाइटल न्यू एम्पायर्स एंड किंगडम्स अरविंद प्लेस अ किंग Arvind had been chosen to act as a king in the school play. He had expected to march solemnly in splendid robes, to twirl his moustaches and wield the silver paper wrapped sword with gusto. Imagine his surprise when he was told that he would also have to sit and play a veena and recite poetry. A musician king Who was that? He wondered. Prashastis and what they tell us. Arvind was supposed to be acting as Samudragupta, a famous ruler of a dynasty known as the Guptas. We know about Samudragupta from a long inscription inscribed on the Ashokan pillar at Allahabad. It was composed as a kavya by Hari Shen. who was a poet and a minister at the court of samudragupta this inscription is of a special kind known as a prashasti a sanskrit word meaning in praise of while prashastis were composed for some of the rulers you read about in chapter 9 such as gautami putra shri satakarni they became far more important from the time of the guptas samudragupta's prashasti let us see what samudragupta's prashasti tells us the poet praised the king in glowing terms as a warrior as a king who won victories in battle who was learned and best of poets he is also described as equal to the gods the prashasti was composed in very long sentences here is part of one such sentence page number 104 samudragupta the warrior whose body was most charming being covered with plenteous beauty of the marks of hundreds of scars caused by battle axes arrows spikes spears barbed darts swords iron clubs javelins barbed arrows long arrows and many other weapons what does this description tell you about the king and also about how kings fought wars if you look at map 7 page number 105 you will notice an area shaded in green you will also find a series of red dots along the east coast and you will find areas marked in purple and blue as well this map is based on the information provided in the prashasti hari shen describes four different kinds of rulers and tells us about samudragupta's policies towards them Number 1 The rulers of Aryavarth the area shaded in green on the map here there were nine rulers who were uprooted and their kingdoms were made a part of Samudragupta's empire 2 The rulers of Dakshinpath here there were 12 rulers some of whose capitals are marked with red dots on the map they surrendered to samudragupta after being defeated and he then allowed them to rule again number 3 the inner circle of neighboring states including assam coastal bengal nepal and a number of gan or sangs remember chapter 5 in the northwest marked in purple on the map they brought tribute followed his orders and attended his court number 4 the rulers of the outlying areas 
marked in blue on the map, perhaps the descendants of the Kushanas and Shakas, and the ruler of Sri Lanka, who submitted to him and offered daughters in marriage. On this page, two pictures are shown. There are coins in these pictures. They show the king who played the veena. Some other qualities of Samudragupta are shown on coins, such as this one, where he is shown playing the veena. Page number 105. Find Prayag, the old name of Allahabad, Ujjain and Patliputra, or Patna, on the map. These were important centers of the Gupta rulers. What was the difference between the way in which Samudragupta treated the rulers of Aryavarta and Dakshinpath? Can you suggest any reasons for this difference? On this page, map number 7, showing important cities and kingdoms, is displayed. The main cities are Thanesar, Mathura, Kannauj, Prayag, Pataliputra, Nalanda, Ujjain, Vallabhi, Bharuch, Satvahan, Ajanta, Amaravati, Ehul, Chalukya, Pallav, Kanchipuram, Mahabalipuram, Arikamedu, Puhar, page number 106. Genealogies Most Prashastis also mention the ancestors of the ruler. This one mentions Samudragupta's great-grandfather, grandfather, father, and mother. His mother, Kumar Devi, belonged to the Lichavi Gan, while his father, Chandragupta, was the first ruler of the Gupta dynasty to adopt the grand title of Maharaja Dhiraj, a title that Samudragupta also used. His great grandfather and grandfather are mentioned simply as Maharajas. It seems as if the family gradually rose to importance. Arrange these titles in order of importance. Raja, Maharaj Adhiraj, Maharaja. Samudragupta, in turn, figures in the genealogies, lists of ancestors of later rulers of the dynasty, such as his son, Chandragupta II. We know about him from inscriptions and coins. He led an expedition to western India, where he overcame the last of the Shakas. According to later belief, his court was full of learned people, about some of them whom you will read in chapter 11. Harshvardhan and the Harsh Charit while we can learn about the Gupta rulers from their inscriptions and coins, we can find out about some kings from biographies. Harshvardhan, who ruled nearly 1,400 years ago, was one such ruler. His court poet, Barn Bhatt, wrote his biography, the Harsh Charit, in Sanskrit. This gives us the genealogy of Harsh and ends with his becoming king. Shwensang, about whom you read in chapter 9, also spent a lot of time at Harsh's court and left a detailed account of what he saw. Page number 107 Harsh was not the eldest son of his father, but became king of Thanissa after both his father and elder brother died. His brother-in-law was the ruler of Kannauj. See map number 7. 
and he was killed by the ruler of Bengal. Harsh took over the kingdom of Kannauj and then led an army against the ruler of Bengal. Although he was successful in the east and conquered Magadh and probably Bengal also, he was not as successful elsewhere. He tried to cross the Narmada to march into the Deccan, but was stopped by a ruler belonging to the Chalukya dynasty, Pulkeshin II. Look at political map of India and list the present-day states which Harshwardhan passed through when he went A to Bengal and B up to the Narmada. The Pallavas, Chalukyas and Pulkeshin's Prashasti. The Pallavas and Chalukyas were the most important ruling dynasties in South India during this period. The kingdom of the Pallavas spread from the region around their capital, Kanchipuram, to the Kaveri Delta, while that of the Chalukyas was centred around the Raichur Duab, between the rivers Krishna and Tungabhadra. Ehul, the capital of the Chalukyas, was an important trading centre. See map 7. It developed as a religious centre with a number of temples. The Pallavas and Chalukyas frequently raided one another's lands, especially attacking the capital cities, which were prosperous towns. The best-known Chalukya ruler was Pulkeshin II. We know about him from a prashasti composed by his court poet Ravikirti. This tells us about his ancestors, who are traced back through four generations from father to son. Pulkeshin evidently got the kingdom from his uncle. Page number 108 According to Ravi Kirti, he led expeditions along both the west and the east coasts. Besides, he checked the advance of Harsh. There is an interesting play of words in the poem. Harsh means happiness. The poet says that after this defeat, Harsh was no longer Harsh. Pulkeshin also attacked the Pallava king, who took shelter behind the walls of Kanchipuram. But the Chalukya victory was short-lived. Ultimately, both the Pallavas and the Chalukyas gave way to new rulers belonging to the Rashtrakut and Chola dynasties, about which you will study in class 7. Who were the rulers who tried to control the coasts and why? Hint, see chapter 9. How were these kingdoms administered? As in the case of earlier kings, land revenue remained important for these rulers and the village remained the basic unit of administration. There were some new developments as well. Kings adopted a number of steps to win the support of men who were powerful, either economically or socially, or because of their political and military strength. For instance, some important administrative posts were now hereditary. This means that sons succeeded fathers to these posts. For example, the poet Harishen was a Mahadandanayak or chief judicial officer like his father. Sometimes one person held many offices. For instance, besides being a Mahadandanayak, Harishen was a Kumar Amatya, meaning an important minister, and a Sandhi Vigrahik, meaning a minister of war and peace. Besides, important men probably had a say in local administration. These included the Nagar Shreshti or chief banker or merchant of the city, the Sarthvaha or leader of the merchant caravans, the Pratham Kulika or the chief craftsman, and the head of the Kayasthas or scribes. 
these policies were reasonably effective but sooner or later some of these powerful men grew strong enough to set up independent kingdoms what do you think may have been the advantages and disadvantages of having hereditary officers page number 109 a new kind of army like earlier rulers some of these kings maintained a well organized army with elephants chariots cavalry and foot soldiers besides there were military leaders who provided the king with troops whenever he needed them they were not paid regular salaries instead some of them received grants of land they collected revenue from the land and used this to maintain soldiers and horses and provide equipment for warfare these men were known as samants whenever the ruler was weak samants tried to become independent assemblies in the southern kingdoms the inscriptions of the pallavas mention a number of local assemblies these included the sabha which was an assembly of brahmin land owners this assembly functioned through subcommittees which looked after irrigation agricultural operations making roads local temples etc the ur was a village assembly found in areas where the land owners were not brahmins and the nagaram was an organization of merchants it is likely that these assemblies were controlled by rich and powerful land owners and merchants many of these local assemblies continued to function for centuries ordinary people in the kingdoms we can catch an occasional glimpse of the lives of ordinary people from plays and other accounts let us look at some of these kalidas is known for his plays depicting life in the king's court an interesting feature about these plays is that the king and most brahmins are shown as speaking sanskrit while women and men other than the king and brahmins use prakrit his most famous play abhigyan shakuntalam is the story of the love between a king named dushyant and a young woman named shakuntala we find an interesting description of the plight of a poor fisherman in this play a fisherman finds a ring a fisherman found a precious ring which the king had given to shakuntala but which had been accidentally swallowed by a fish when he went to the palace with it the gatemen accused him of theft and the chief police officer was rather rude however the king was happy when he saw the ring and sent a reward for the fisherman then the police officer and the gatemen decided to take a share of the reward and went along with the fisherman to have a drink do you think that if a poor man finds something and reports this to the police he would be treated like this today name a famous man who taught in prakrit and a king who issued inscriptions in prakrit hint c chapter 6 and 7 page number 111 the chinese pilgrim Fashian noticed the plight of those who were treated as untouchables by the high and mighty they were expected to live on the outskirts of the city he writes if such a man enters a town or a market place he strikes a piece of wood in order to keep himself separate people hearing this sound know what it means and avoid touching him or brushing against him and barnabhat provides us with a vivid picture of the king's army on the move the king's army the king traveled with an enormous amount of equipment apart from weapons there were things of daily use 
such as pots, pans, furniture, golden footstools, food, including animals such as goat, deer, rabbits, vegetables, spices, carried on carts or loaded onto pack animals such as camels and elephants. This huge army was accompanied by musicians beating drums and others playing horns and trumpets. Villagers had to provide hospitality along the way. They came with gifts of curds, gourd and flowers and provided fodder for the animals. They also tried to meet the king and place their complaints and petitions before him. The army left a trail of destruction behind. Elephants often trampled down the huts of villagers and the oxen yoked to the caravans of merchants ran away, scared by the tumult. As Barnabhatta says, the whole world was swallowed up in dust. Make a list of all the things that were carried with the army. What did the villagers bring for the king? Page number 112 Elsewhere Find Arabia on map 6, pages 76-77. Although it's a desert, it was at the hub of communications for centuries. In fact, Arab merchants and sailors played an important role in the sea trade between India and Europe. See page 92. Others who lived in Arabia were the Bedouins, pastoral tribes depending mainly on camels, hardy animals that could survive in the desert. Around 1,400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad introduced a new religion, Islam, in Arabia. Like Christianity, Islam was a religion that laid stress on the equality and unity of all before Allah, the one supreme God. Here is a verse from the Quran, the sacred book of Islam. For Muslim men and women, for believing men and women, for devout men and women, for true men and women, for men and women who are patient and constant, for men and women who humble themselves, for men and women who give in charity, for men and women who fast, for men and women who guard their chastity, and for men and women who engage much in Allah's remembrance, for them has Allah prepared forgiveness and great reward. Within a hundred years, Islam spread to North Africa, Spain, Iran and India. Arab sailors, who were already familiar with the coastal settlements of the subcontinent, now brought the new religion with them. Arab soldiers conquered Sindh. In the present-day Pakistan, about 1,300 years ago, trace the routes that would have been taken by these sailors and soldiers on map 6. Imagine, Harshvardhan's army will visit your village next week. Your parents are preparing for the visit. Describe what they say and do. Let's recall. 1. State whether true or false. A. Harishen composed a prashasti in praise of Gautami Putra, Sri Satkarni. B. The rulers of Aryavart brought tribute for Samudragupta. C. There were twelve rulers in Dakshinpat. D. Takshashila and Madurai were important centers under the control of the Gupta rulers. E. Ehol was the capital of the Pallavas. F. Local assemblies functioned for several centuries in South India. 2. Mention three authors who wrote about Harsh Vardhan. 3. What changes do you find in the army at this time? 4. 
what were the new administrative arrangements during this period. Let's discuss. 5. What do you think Arvind would have to do if he was acting as Samudra Gupta? 6. Do you think ordinary people would have read and understood the Prashastis? Give reasons for your answer. Let's do. 7. If you had to make a genealogy for yourself, who are the people you would include in it? How many generations would you like to show? Make a chart and fill it. 8. How do you think wars affect the lives of ordinary people today? Keywords Prashasti Aryavart Dakshinpath Genealogy Hereditary Officer Samant Assembly Nagaram Some important dates Beginning of the Gupta dynasty About 1700 years ago The rule of Harshvardhan About 1400 years ago The chapter 10 ends here Narrator Babla Kochar Producer Vimlesh Chaudhary Presented by C.I.E.T. N.C.E.R.T. New Delhi, India